Hi, Marie. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good. I was just about to shut this down and go log in and find out what was going on because it was so close to nine. But <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. I was just like, my heart was palpitating. I was like, uh-oh, did we get it wrong again? So hopefully the URL works for everybody this time. Yeah, I can see people coming in, so that's yeah. great. Yeah, I, I made sure this time I did a, a I did the meeting booking and then I, I copied the invite properly. And so <laughs> hopefully it worked this time. Thanks. I will mute myself. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm not sure how many we're expecting today, but um, we're going to wait a couple of more minutes until nine o'clock. Um, so just sit tight. I will try and take a look at the chat questions as they come in. So every now and then I'll pause and take a look at some of the chat questions. Um, but otherwise, we've got um, a bunch of things to work through today, and we'll start in a couple of minutes. Yeah, Marie, we have we actually have I think the most of all of the sessions signed up. Uh, so there's 31 people signed up. So uh, oh, wow. Um, yeah. So we'll see who shows up. But uh, okay. yeah, quite a large group. So for you, those of you just joining us, we've just hit nine o'clock. Um, we've got about seven people logged in so far, but we're expecting quite a few more. So I'm gonna wait another couple of minutes just to let everybody have a chance to log in. Oh, and I have a question um, that there, somebody's not hearing any sounds. So I'm hoping you can hear me now. We're just waiting. Um, let's see, we still only have about seven participants, so we're still waiting for 20 or so more. So I have, I know at least one person who's, no, oh, they can hear me now, that's great. Okay, so um, again, still waiting for a lot of people. So thank you for your patience. And in the meantime, if you just wanna turn your microphones and your video cameras off, that would be great. And I do have the chat window open. A little bit difficult for me to see it as I'm working through our tutorial today. So I'm gonna flip back and forth a little bit here with the chat.
Okay, well, what I might do is um, I might actually start going ahead with this. People, we have 20, I can't remember, Scott, if it was 30 people, quite a few people that signed up, and um, we don't have that many in yet, but maybe they signed up and can only join us in a little bit. So I will get started so that we can cover off everything today. And uh, we did get a few questions from the libraries over the past week, so I'm going to start with those. And then I'll talk about a few other things that we haven't had a chance to go through today. I'm just going to get set up here. And I'm hoping that everybody can see the Maple Library Test Development site. That's the website that I'm on right now. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of background noise. So if you can mute yourself, that would be really great. And then when you need to ask a question, just unmute yourself. So you should have to be able to see a mute, unmute yourself button on the presenting screen. Okay, so I'm going to get started with a couple of the questions that we got um, from the libraries. And one of the questions was adding and removing menu items. So we're talking about the menu, the drop down menu bar here, and how to add and remove items there. So first of all, we've got the labels, the main section labels at the top here, and those you cannot automatically add and remove. And so there's a good reason for that. It's because once you have a system in place, you don't want to start confusing your patrons with changing labels or adding in new things. Um, and you don't want to overwhelm them with too many options either. Um, underneath that, you've got your, the pages within your website. And so libraries are adding pages and removing pages here and there. And so you want to be able to add that to your menu system. Once you add in a new page, it's not automatically added to that menu system, in which case you do need to send a support request to the co-op and ask them to add that new page to your menu system. And the same is if you remove one of your pages, you'll want to send a request to the co-op support to have them remove that page. So at this time, we don't have that capability for, the, for you to do it yourselves, but it's a really quick um, email to support to have them change that for you. So I hope I answered that question. And then the next question that we had was about forms. So when I'm talking about a form, I'm talking about something like this if I go over to the Squamish Library website. And they have a form called Suggest a Purchase. So that's a fairly standard form for libraries. Um, it's asking patrons for suggestions on materials to add to the collection. It's a fairly straightforward form. And in this case, if you wanted to create a form, something like this, it doesn't have to be Suggest a Purchase, it could be anything else, um, you will have to ask the co-op to get that set up for you because there's quite a bit of design and work um, behind the scenes to get that up and running for you. Once it's in place, if a patron fills in that form, the contents are automatically sent to whichever email address you want it to go to. So once the co-op has built it for you, the co-op steps back, and then it's just between you and the patrons. Um, there are other options as well. If you're looking for very complex forms, um, you will want to talk to the co-op about that. But there are, of course, other uh, third-party tools, something like Eventbrite, and some of our libraries are using that. They might have a uh, registration system in place using something like Eventbrite, and then they'll simply put a link on their website and link to Eventbrite that way. So you have lots of different options there. And again, I would just get in touch with the co-op to get some advice on how to go forward with that. So when I pause, take a big pause, it's just me going to the chat screen just to see if anybody has typed in a question. Um, but do feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions and make comments as well. One of the other questions we had was widgets. What are widgets? We keep hearing that word. And in this case with LivePress, because our, our websites are built on WordPress, we're talking about WordPress widgets. And those are these little boxes of information on the right-hand side of your screen. So we have connect with us online, which is one of the widgets. Um, we have looking for more information, which is another widget. And a widget could just have some text information in there. It could have these images. It could have lots of different features in there. 
So it's basically just little boxes of information on the right hand side of your screen. And that brings me to something else that other libraries were asking about. Because I'm looking at the Squamish Library's widgets or inner page widgets. We call them inner page widgets because they're inside the web website. Some libraries were asking about the social media icons. So a lot of our libraries do have a presence on things like Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram. And they want to be able to have those links on their website. So you can see here that Squamish Library is using one of the inner page widgets to include links to their presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. So in this case, this Facebook link will go directly to the Squamish Library page on Facebook. So it's not going to a patron's page, it's going to the Squamish Library's page. And the same with Twitter, it will go directly to Squamish Library's Twitter account. So if I click on that, it's going, you can see in the URL, it's twitter.com slash Squamish Library. And then you can see what's happening at the Squamish Library because they're quite active on their Twitter account. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you something that's a little bit different. If I go to Gibson's Library, they've got the similar sort of thing. They've got the library on social media. They've got their icons here. They've got an Instagram account. They've got Twitter and Facebook. So this is going to Gibson's presence on those social media accounts. But if we scroll down, we have another section, another little widget called Share This. And that's a little bit different because in this case, if we're looking up at a particular page, we're looking at online resources. If a patron thinks, oh, this is a really interesting page, I want to share this with my friends, then these icons will actually take that page and create a link on your patron's Twitter account or on their Facebook account. So in this case, we're not going to the library's Twitter account. It's going to create a link to this particular page on the patron's Twitter account, and then the patron can add in some information around that before they actually post it live on their account. So that's the difference between the share this buttons and the library on social media buttons up at the top. There's a third place, if I scroll all the way down, we have another place on the website called Follow Us, and it, again, it includes the social media icons, and in, again, in this case, this is going to the library's presence on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. And so if I go back to the Squamish Library website, you can see at the bottom there, they've got a similar thing, Follow Us. Their icons are, are a little bit bigger, and so if you want to adjust these in any way, if you want to add in icons or remove them or change your links, just send us a request to support at co-op and they can change that for you. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense about the difference in those icons. If you choose, if you would decide that, you know, you don't want to have um, those particular icons in a certain place, Again, send a request to the co-op. You'll see on the Squamish Library page that the Share This widget is actually empty. So in this case, I would suggest to Squamish to work with the co-op to either remove this uh, title altogether or add in the actual icons below that. If I go back to um, Gibson's, they've got that widget there. And again, that's up to Gibson's if they want to keep that there or if they would like to remove it or change it somehow. So they just need to talk to the co-op about that. Okay. So we've talked about our social media icons. Um, the one other thing that came in from the libraries was about something that was happening on the events. So I'm just gonna go to the events calendar And it was to do with the RS, RSS feeds. So I'm going to click one of these um, events to see a little bit more information. And when you're viewing an event, you can see below the event that there are these RSS feed, RSS, follow comments, and some broken images there. 
Um, this is something that obviously needs to be a little bit fixed up. And so if you would like to keep these there so that people can click on that and then automatically follow your events as they happen, um, you can keep those icons there and the co-op just needs to make sure that those icons are not broken. So you have options here. You can talk to the co-op about certain things. If you want to remove certain sections, if you want to remove those RSS feeds, just talk to the co-op and we can remove them for you. Um, the share this, Again, that's something to talk to the co-op about. But the library on social media widget at the top here, that is one of the inner page widgets that you have full control over. So we're going to talk about that today on how you can actually adjust that. And sorry, I have to keep taking sips of water because I have a bad cold this week, which I think most of us do. Lots of stuff going around. So I'm going to talk about how you can adjust this widget of information. Again, the other little bits you'll have to talk to the co-op about adjusting for you or removing or adding in. But this one here, you have full control over. So this is an inner page widget. The looking for more information box, that's an inner page widget. You can edit them, you can remove them, you can add in new ones. And that's what we'll talk about here. And again, all of this is in the documentation for LivePress. So if you forget or you're not quite sure, just go back to that documentation page and you'll find out how to do it there. So inner page widgets, there's lots of things going on here. Um, I'm gonna go back to my development server and I'll just look at what's going on with the inner page widgets here. And you'll see here, I just have one widget, one inner page, and it's got a title at the top widgets. So most of our libraries do not have that, which is a good thing. We don't need our patrons to see that. So just disregard that for the training session. And I'm gonna show you how to actually adjust this here. So I'm already logged into my website and I'm gonna to go to my dashboard. The first hint about inner page widgets is the actual name. So it includes the word page. So these are like little pages of information. So in that case, you want to go down to the pages section. They are like tiny little mini pages of information. So we'll go to pages. And here I have a list of all of the pages that are on my Maple Public Library website. So in this case, we've got 132 pages. <clears throat> 118 of them are published. Well, I don't want to be scrolling through 118 pages of information. I just want to work with my little inner page widgets. So these are differentiated by the category. So they have a special category and a special tag all to themselves. And it's called info tile. So if I click on that drop box and I look down, there is something called info tile. And the reason it's such a cryptic word is that we figure no library is actually ever going to tag their content with info tiles. So we're not going to be overriding anything there. We wanted it to be very different from the rest of the content on your website. So if I tap on info tile and then filter, I will get a list of the inner page widgets. So in this case, I only have one looking for more information. So it's the category and the tag info tile that make LivePress know that this is not a standard page of content. This is a little separate special page and I need to show it on the sidebar. So if I, I think in this case, what I'll do is I'll just add in a brand new one. So I'm gonna add in a new page. Let's get a second inner page widget going. So I create a brand new page. And new inner page widget. I'm not terribly creative today in my titles, but we'll just go with that for now. So I put in a title for my inner page widget. I put in some content, and I might put in some graphics. I can go to my media library. I can click on anything in there. I could add links to this, so I can treat it exactly the same way as any other page of information. I can add links, I can add uh, formatting, I 
can make it look however I want. And just remember that this is a much smaller space on your screen. So try to keep your images sized down. Try to keep it, um, don't overload it with a lot of content. So we'll just um, start with that. But I have to make sure this is different from every other page on my website. So I'm going to go to my categories box on the side here. And I'm going to click on info tile. And I'm also going to add the tag of info tile. So this is just telling LivePress this is a very different page. When I publish that, oops, I'm going to go and take a look at my website. I'm not going to see it on the home page because it's an inner page widget. But if I go to any of the inner pages, I will see my new page, my new inner page widget there. So because it's my newest one, it shows up at the top. And you can reorder these because they are being listed by date. So if you wanted to change the order of your widgets, you're going to just change the date of one of your widgets here. So for example, if I wanted to put my new widget below my looking for more information widget, I'm gonna make it an older piece of content. So I'm gonna go back to my widget, my edit page, and I'm gonna ch just change the publish date. So just above your update button, you can actually edit the publish date. And I'm just gonna put this back to the year 2000. It doesn't even matter very far. As long as it's older than the other widget, it will show up below it. So we'll click Update. And then I'm going to go back to my next page here. Do a refresh. Uh, sorry, I'm just taking a look at some of the questions here. Okay, so I'll get back to those in a second. Um, and you can see, looking for more information is at the top now because it's considered the newest in widget and the new inner page, page widget is below that. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at the chat questions that have come up. There is a question about the blog, so I'm going to go over that in a minute. Um, there is a question about full overhaul for the library sites, so I will probably let Scott speak to that in maybe near the end of that. And there's a question about do widgets show on every page or can you have it on specific pages? At this time, widgets show up on all of the inner pages. It's very complex programming to get specific widgets on specific pages. So um, in this case, if I go to a different page on my website, you'll see the same widgets on those pages. So think of those widgets as sort of like little pieces of advertisements or maybe like posters within your library. So when people are walking around, they see a poster. This is that sort of thing. So you might want to put in, um, you can update these on a regular basis. So maybe you could put in a link to your events, or you could put in a link to your um, a new piece of a new service or a new resource that you have. Uh, so you can change them up as much as you want, but they will show up on every page of your website. So that's a good question. Okay, so there was a question about the blog, and let me just make sure that I've got it correct. Okay, so the blog, I'm going to just start from the scratch here just to talk a little bit about the blog. And some libraries have this in place and some libraries don't. So that was a decision made at the time of the launch of your website. If you choose to have a blog in place and you don't already have it, again, just contact the co-op and they can get that set up for you. So the blog is basically a place where you can put in any kind of content that you would like. Maybe it doesn't fit particularly well in another part of your website. Some libraries are using the blog to put up book reviews. 
some are putting up their weekly newsletters, um, some have not used their blog in a little while. So there's lots of different things that you can do here, as you can see. Um, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Blogs are a little bit different. They're not like pages on your website. They are considered to be posts. So if I go to my dashboard and I go to the posts section, on my Maple site, we only have one blog post. So I'll show you what that looks like. Going to my blog section, in this case, the title is Did You Know? And the library has a collection of British Columbia historical maps. Um, so this is just an example. Maybe you want to highlight certain collections that you have. So how do you add a new post? So consider the blog. You might rename the blog. It doesn't have to be called blog. I know that some libraries have renamed it to be Mike's Book Corner or Newsletters. You can have it whatever you would like. So in this case, what we'll do is we're going to add in a new blog post. So it's very similar to adding a new brand new page of information, except it's called a post. So this piece of, in, piece of content is not going to show up anywhere else on your website. It's going to show up under your blog section, whatever you rename that blog to. So we can just say new resource at the library. Um, and you can talk about success stories or new databases or new programs. Um, if you've had a program at the library and you had a great turnout and you've got a couple of photographs, you might want to say, hey, we had this speaker at the library and we had 20 people show up and they talked about this and it was a great success. You could put things like that onto your blog. So it's a great way of sharing some of your success stories. You can include photographs. Same as any other page of content, you can put any kind of content you want on there. And people can subscribe to your log through those RSS links, and that way they automatically get updated about new content on your blog. So if I publish that, and I go back to my blog page, Give me a refresh. Now I've got a new blog here. So if I were in charge of the Maple Public Library and I have this blog happening, I have this RSS feed where people can click that so that they automatically get notifications of new blog posts. I would just contact the library or the co-op, sorry, to say, hey, can you just fix the little icons on my on my blog page, please? So it's a nice way of highlighting some news and events there. Um, you can certainly remove blog posts at any time. So if you wanted to take blog posts off, you go back to that particular post and you can change the status of that post over here on the publish box. We have a status right now it's published. We can set that to draft. If you set that to draft, it just no longer becomes visible to your patrons. So it's set to draft but remember to click the update button to make sure that happens. So now if I go back to my blog and do a refresh, I'm back to just the one blog post there. So if, for example, you have lots and lots of posts up there and you decide that you only want to have the previous two months of posts happening, just go back to the older posts and set them to draft, and then that way they were not going to show up anymore. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the home page because we talked last week about the highlights on your home page and the new items carousel in there. And I just wanted to make sure that you knew how to connect your carousels there and how to change the genre if you wanted. So this is specific to those libraries that are using the Sitka catalog. And you'll see here right now we've got 
a link on our test site to new items. There are just two new um, nonfiction items. We're looking at nonfiction genre right now. And I'm going to tell you how you can actually change that. So let's go back to our dashboard. And we go to our highlights. And remember, we've got six highlights here, but three are published. So if you weren't with us last week, I just want to re-emphasize that you always want to have three highlights published, and you can have as many as you'd like in draft mode. So let's take a look at my new items. This is connecting to the Sitka catalog, and what it's using, let's give it a minute to show up there, is something we call a short code. So I think I may have mentioned this in the last couple of sessions. A short code is a little piece of programming information for LibPress that tells it to replace this content with something else. So you don't have to worry too much about what's in there or what it looks like. I know it looks kind of odd and cryptic, but this is a little piece of code that's telling LivePress to do something. So in this case, it's saying, okay, replace all of this text here within the square brackets with an actual Sitka carousel. And the other little bit that's gonna be different for each of the library websites <coughs> is the number here. So if you're creating a brand new highlight with a Sitka carousel, then what you wanna make sure is you put in this code here, the square bracket Sitka underscore carousel space post ID equals the number in between the quotation marks will depend on what your post ID is up at the top of the screen. Again, this is in the documentation, so not to worry about writing all of this down right now, but you'll see in my website address bar, we have a post number and the post is 1442. So you wanna make sure that matches this number in the short code. And that will be different for the different library websites. It could be 924, it could be 543, in this case, it's 1442. And as long as those numbers match, this is going to work for that carousel. The next thing you want to do is scroll all the way down. And we have a little box here at the bottom called Sitka Carousel. And so that is telling the system which genre to pick. So it depends on what's been populated in your catalog in the last couple of months. Um, you might have a longer list of information here. You might have a shorter list, but right now it's set to adult nonfiction and I'm going to just change that to adult fiction. So at any time you can go in and change that and then click update. So I'll do a refresh of my screen and so hopefully we see some different book covers. And there we go, that's looking a little bit more like new fiction. So those are now drawn directly from your catalog, your new items. And if a patron were to click on that, it's going to go to your catalog where they can see more information and maybe put a hold on the book. You can also add in um, ebook and audiobook carousels to library to go. I would not suggest having the two carousels going at the same time. I would choose one or the other. But for today, what we'll do is we'll just add in a new highlight with that ebook carousel. So I'll go back to my list of highlights and just see. Oh, I've already got one in place here. So I have one set to draft, download new ebooks and audiobooks. So what I'm going to do instead, and we did this last week. So I'll go over this quite quickly, is we're going to replace our Sitka catalog carousel with the library to go carousel. And you'll notice that the new items carousel, which is published right now, is set to show up in column number three. And my ebook and audiobook carousel is also set to show up in column number three, but it's set to draft mode. So I'm gonna swap these in and out. I'm gonna set my new items Sitka carousel to draft, and I'm going to set my ebook carousel to published. We're gonna do that fairly quickly. Do a quick edit. 
set the Sitka carousel to draft, click update, go to my ebook and audiobook carousel, and we're going to publish that one. Now, really what I should have done was gone into this carousel first just to make sure that it looks okay before I published it, but because this is a training session, that's okay. Now when I'm actually looking at that carousel, it is already published, but when we actually go to edit it, you'll see that there's another short code, but it looks a little bit different. This time it says overdrive underscore carousel, and that's it. So you don't need to add in any kind of numbers or anything there. As long as you have this short code, the square brackets, overdrive underscore carousel, that's going to draw in the library to go carousel. So we'll go back to the home page and do a refresh. And now it's changed to ebooks and audiobooks, and that goes directly to the library to go system. Okay, I'm going to just take a moment to look at the chat questions. Okay, that's a good question. Um, there's a question, can the carousel, does the carousel have to go on the homepage highlight only? Can you have a new fiction carousel on the homepage and an ebook audiobook carousel on an overdrive page, for example? I believe the answer is yes. I'm going to have to test that out for a moment. So in this case, let's just assume this was our Sitka carousel and you wanted to put another carousel on an inner page. So let's just see if I can find, um, we'll just grab any random page in here on my test website. So let's assume that this is another page about library to go. So I'm going to edit this page. And I'm on computer training, but we'll just disregard the title. Let's assume this is library to go. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just replace the content here with overdrive underscore carousel. I'm going to update that. And I'll view that page. And there we go. So we can have that carousel or the Sitka carousel showing up on pages within your website. And if you wanted to, you could add in information about the service. You can put text afterwards. So I'm just publishing that. So that's another great way is you might not be able to put there we go, just to make sure here, when I publish it, I've got my text that I've added in before that short code and after as well. So you could add in some images, you could add in links, and certainly a lot more information about the service itself. So that's a good question. There was a question about the Biblio Commons catalog. And <clears throat> that one I'm going to suggest for video comments questions about the, that carousel to send in um, an email to the support at the co-op for those specific questions. Um, there was also a question about the upcoming events on the Maple Libraries as a highlight. So I think let's go back to our home page. We covered this last session on how to set up those um, automatically having your, your events showing up in one of the highlights on uh, the home page. So if we have time in this session, I will review that again, most certainly. But um, it is also in the um, documentation. And if uh, we don't have time to cover that today, then do make sure to send a question to the co-op so that we can get that on there for you.
Okay, so one other thing that I wanted to go through today, and that was to talk about some of the centralized content. And by centralized content, what I'm talking about is um, chunks of content that are similar across libraries. So instead of recreating a wheel for, the li for every library to recreate lists of information that might be the same across all of the libraries in your province, we've tried to make that a little bit easier for you. So for example, if we go to the health, medical, and wellness page on our test site, you'll see that what we're trying to do here is combine all of the information and resources that we have in the library for our patrons because typically patrons might not understand the difference between databases and websites and all of the different resources that you have. So they might not be coming in with a question of, hey, do you have Consumer Health Complete? Because they don't even really know what that is. But they do know that they have a question about arthritis or diabetes. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put all of that information on one page for them and separate it so that we can try to educate them on what those different resources are. So here on the health page, we have the first section, which is library databases. And a little blurb about what those are. And each library will have a different set of databases here. And then below that, we have recommended websites. Again, it's trying to educate the patron on what the difference is between websites and databases. Below the websites, some libraries might have a local health and medical resources section, and some libraries might have health resources at our library, which are links that are popular subject headings that go directly into your catalog for that particular subject. So we're trying to capture everything on that page for your patrons. Now the recommended websites are typically the same kind of website that would be recommended by every library in your province. They will be different from province to province, most likely, but across BC, we might be recommending the same kinds of websites. So this section here, even though it doesn't really look very different, this is centralized content. It is just one page of information that is being drawn into all of the different library websites, if they choose to have it. You have control over whether or not you want to have that centralized content there or not. So let's see what that looks like when we actually go and edit the page. So here we have our health, medical, and wellness page. And at the very top of the content, we have our library databases, as we expect to see. And then we have our website section, but again, we have a new short code in there. We have those square brackets with the cryptic text. So again, this is a short code telling LivePress, replace this content with something else. And in this case, what it's replacing it with is something from below. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down past all of the other content, which looks like normal content. If I scroll down, we have a box here called Shared Text Preview. And what it's doing is this shows up on every page of your website. So you can choose to include some shared text or centralized content or not. So in this case, if there's a check mark here, it means it's using this particular content and it's going to take all of this content and put it into where that short code is at the top in your content window. So if I take a look at that shared text preview and dig a little deeper there, we have databases, health websites. This is my training website, so this looks a little bit different from what you have available on your websites, because on your websites, you do have the option of having BC health websites or Manitoba health websites, and these were websites that were recommended to us from the libraries that we've been working with. And if I look on that drop down menu, there are lots and lots of different types of content that you can choose. There's kids homework. There's, um, again, this is a training uh, server, so we're not, we don't have everything that you have on your site. Um, but you can choose, have a look at all the other information that's available here. We have legal websites that are available. Um, we have information about audiobook services, which this is out of date. 
But in this case, what we wanted was the health websites. If I choose decide that I do not want this on my page, all I have to do is get rid of that check mark and update the page. And when that happens, we're going to lose that short code. So I'm going to scroll down and you'll see the website's title is still there, but there's no content. So you have to make sure that you add in some content or remove that title altogether. So if you decide you're working on something and that you would like to include some shared text or centralized content, all you have to do is go back down to the bottom of the page, find the shared text preview box, click the drop down menu and scroll through and find what you're looking for. So we'll put back the health websites. It automatically puts that check mark in there. And then I have to click update to make sure that it shows up. So that's the first step, but you'll notice when I click update, that shared text is showing up at the top of my screen. So I want to cut that cryptic text. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it where I want it on the website. So a two step process. And now I'll click update. And then I'll show you one other little trick that you could use if you'd like. So again, we have our library databases and now we have our websites back in place as we're expecting to see them there. So some libraries might say, you know, I, I like those uh, that share content, but I want to make it a little bit different. So in that case, this is a little bit of a trick here, um, a little bit of a workaround. But say, for example, you want to use some of these links, but not all of them. What you can do is decide altogether to just remove that from your database, from your website. You can take it off. This is not going to show up. But then what you can do is in that shared text preview box, you can copy this. You can select all of the content. I'll do a control C to copy it. And I'll go back to where I have that content. I'm going to get rid of the cryptic text and I'm going to do a paste. So control V to paste it. And now it shows up here. So it's not drawing from the LivePress centralized da database anymore. This is on your website. It's a single instance here. And you can add content. You can remove certain um, bits of information here. You can add more to it. This is a table, so I'm going to maybe um, delete this row altogether. Maybe I'm going to add in some more content. So now it's behaving like any other content on your website. So it's a little bit of a workaround if you wanted to adjust that content. So I'm going to click update. Most of our libraries, I think, are using that centralized content as is. And they're not doing that trick that I just showed you. But if you wanted to, you could do it that way. So you'll see I've still got that table of information here. If I go to the actual page on the front end, it's going to show me that content. And it doesn't look any different. People can't tell that it's centralized content or not. It's no longer centralized content, but it still looks kind of the same. So now you have more control over actually adjusting the content in there. If you notice that anything is out of date, do let us know at the co-op so that we can um, make sure that all of those links are up to date for all of our libraries. If we do make a change, <clears throat> if we update one of the links in, on our centralized server, it will show up correctly for all of the libraries who are using that centralized content. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left, and I just wanted to check in with um, some of the libraries <clears throat> and with Scott to see if there were some um, 
anybody wanted to add anything, talk about anything, questions, comments, make sure we have time for that. Yeah, please unmute yourself and uh, uh, ask a question if you've got one. Um, there was one question about an updated manual. The manual is fairly up to date. If you notice that anything is not up to date, just let us know, but it should be pretty accurate to what we've spoken about in the last three sessions. Yeah, Marie, there, there definitely are some bits that have gone out of date. Um, so uh, right now our plan is, uh, we're really hoping that uh, the Canada student grants come through. Uh, we have a position lined up for the summer for uh, a, like a co-op student, a, a library tech student we're looking at. Um, uh, we don't hear until April 1st, but one of their tasks will be updating the manual. Uh, in addition to that, we're hoping that they will uh, do some cleanup on the shared content. That's uh, some of that's gone stale over time. So there's stuff that can get cleaned out. And then um, also doing a bit of an audit on all of the uh, licensed product links to make sure they're all correct um, across sites uh, based on what we know people license. And then finally, uh, if there's time, do some uh, 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 additional training videos. So yeah, we're hoping that comes through, uh, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, we're just waiting to hear about the funding. Thanks, Scott. There was a question about um, <clears throat> the upcoming events on the home page. So again, we covered that off last week, but I'll go over that quickly now. And what that's doing here, you'll see in one of the highlights on the left-hand side, download magazines, and underneath that, we have upcoming events. This is automatically drawing from the events calendar. So anytime you add in a new event to your events calendar, this highlight will automatically put that up in place. <clears throat> now, you don't need to worry about updating your highlight every time that happens. So in this case, we're just seeing four events and you can limit the number of events that are coming up. And I would suggest doing that if you have 30 events coming up, you don't want to list that out on your homepage. It'd be a lot of scrolling. But let's just have a look at how that works. Again, that's in the manual, so have a look in there. But if we go to highlights, it's under the download magazines highlight. And you'll see we have upcoming events. And again, we've got this short code here. So all we need to do is put in this short code AI1EC, and the view is gonna be the default view that you want people to be looking at your calendar. So if I look here under upcoming events, it's doing a default of stream view, but we could show a poster board view. Oh, my apologies, this isn't working correctly on the test server. Um, I wouldn't show a monthly view because there's not enough room there, um, possibly an agenda view. So my, again, my apologies because it's not set up properly here, but choose maybe either agenda, possibly poster board or stream view as your default. And you would put that in between the quotation marks there. Events limit, you can set that to whatever number you would like, but five is a pretty good number. And then what you can do underneath that is you can have a link to your actual catalog or maybe, sorry, not catalog, the calendar. You could have a link above it or below. And I think one of our libraries, um, I think last week I was demonstrating on South Central Library. Let me take a look at theirs. And you can see with South Central on the right hand side, they've got their events and they're showing up in stream view. They are including event um, images with their events. So they show up as thumbnails there. And below that, they have a link to view more events in the calendar, which is a good idea to include as well. So I'll just go back so that you can see that short code. 
if you wanted to write that out and have that and play with that or if you have questions about that just let the co-op know um marie i'm seeing a question here for me from uh, hannah about uh uh, a question about a full overhaul of live press sites. So I'm assuming you're meaning the look and feel of the site. Um, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the short answer is uh, not really. Uh, the long answer is it's definitely something we've talked about, um, uh, but it's uh, fairly non-trivial. It would, would require um, a decent injection of funding to be able to do it. Um, yeah, uh, I would say, you know, on a library by library basis, we'd be looking at a couple of K and we would need a whole scale uh, uh, adoption of that. Uh, the reason being, um, if you think of all the stuff you've just gone through in the training, uh, all of that has to work with a new theme uh, Otherwise, you're not talking about, like, if it was just a question of, like, hey, uh, plop in a new theme, which WordPress allows you to do, um, uh, and you don't have to worry about any of the functionality, uh, that's really trivial. But for us to uh, plop it in and make sure that all of the existing functionality uh, works uh, uh, is a fairly big deal. So um, it's not a can of worms that I'm particularly anxious to uh, open up, but uh, if you are interested, please do email me. If others are interested, please do email me. Uh, and we would, based on demand, start to think about it. Um, yeah. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. I, I guess the other thing I would mention is is that um, uh, if you're um, really dissatisfied, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a WordPress site. Um, we do lots of WordPress sites standalone. Uh, that's a totally different uh, 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 budgetary question for you. Um, like right now, the cost on LivePress is around two twenty five a year. Um, so designing a site from scratch and hosting on it on its own, that would not be 225 a year. But we're happy to talk to people about going standalone. Uh, again, the reason that we took this approach was that um, it was to give the most functionality uh, to the most people at the lowest cost uh, in a way that complied with best practices and library site design. So, um, yeah, we're, we're totally happy to do uh, uh, neat stuff if you're uh, wanting to, um, but uh, uh, yeah, that's gonna cost you. Uh, and then I don't know what Anisha Academy integrated into their site is, so maybe you can answer that, Marie, or? Um, I, I was just gonna ask about that. I've seen that a couple of times. I don't know what Anisha it is. So. Academy, and I'm not familiar with that. So maybe Hannah, um, you could either, Unmute yourself and let us know more about it, or you can uh, get in touch with the co-op to ask to tell us more about it and, and find out more. Yeah, any specific questions like that, if there's a particular um, service that you have and you're interested in getting it on your website, just send an email to the co-op and, and get a discussion going so that we're more aware of what you have going on and what your needs are and see if we can figure that out for you. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions, but again, feel free to unmute yourself. We have a couple more minutes or type something out on the chat. But otherwise, if there are no other questions, then again, stay in touch with the co-op, let them know um, what you need, what you're looking for, any questions that you have. Um, take a look at the documentation and let us know if you're finding something out of date um, and we're happy to help you with whatever you need. 
And I just wanted to thank uh, Marie for coming out of retirement uh, to help us with these training sessions. Uh, Marie, thank you so much. It's been a joy to have you and uh, to hear your voice again. <laughs> Thanks. It's been great to be back on board and to see some familiar names again. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're, we're hoping to uh, maybe do these once a year. Uh, so uh, uh, if you have other needs, obviously uh, email us uh, libpress at bc.libraries.coop and we're always happy to help. But uh, hopefully this helped refresh some things for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.